So, uh, for the people who are joining us for the first time, you are in the Isle of Albion, a mythical past of our own Earth. And in the Isle of Albion is a type of profession. Um, it is uh, a profession for someone to take up backpacks and torches and water skins and swords and to go into ruins and haunted and forsaken places and contend with the threats there to try to find secrets and magic and treasure and bring it back to the world. Now you are all level one. And so uh, probably seen as black guards and um, not necessarily trustworthy individuals. You don't have the reputation yet to be seen as heroes, but that's your goal. Your goal is to go into these, um, these delves and crypts and things underground, evade the threats that are there, find the treasure, and become wealthy and powerful. And to be a good person, because there's only two new, uh, alignments in these games, good and neutral. Um, players don't, we don't do any chaos, chaos stuff. Um, so also to fight chaos. Um, you have traveled to a province in Albion in the far northeast along what's called the Borderlands. Uh, the Borderlands are a place where no one travels any further as even in summertime, it's a, a cold and dreary land and few resources. And far as you can see across the expanse at night, they say that there are strange lights that appear in the sky to the north. And this has all led to the, northern, the, the northern borderlands of Albion to be this kind of wasteland, which has led for the, there being uh, wild animals and bandit gangs and uh, unpatrolled, uncontrolled, ungoverned spaces. It's perfect for an adventurer and a place where adventurers are needed. Um, in particular, you've traveled to a place called the Forest of Hope, which is in the far northeast. Uh, in Eastreach. And uh, you've taken a ferry from Bardsgate along the river to a small settlement called Zelkor's Ferry. I'll explain what is in Zelkor's Ferry, and then for the first part of the gameplay, it will be the night before we begin. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, I noticed my. At least on my screen, I've got like these weird little blue squares flipping around on my video. Is that me or is that everybody sees that? Uh, everybody can see that. Uh, it looks like your feeds, uh, video feed's not coming through. You either have to check your Discord yeah. settings. Uh, cause yeah, it I did. It. And it says uh, webcam. So. Uh, or sometimes you can drop the call and come back. And sometimes yeah, let me try work. that. Um, meanwhile, can everybody move their token and see? on this page. Wait, the moves. Yep. Sweet. Okay, excellent. Um, I'll check Dan when we get back. And Flanagan's going to be moved by you, yes? Flanagan? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, you should be able to move him. Uh, but I'll, I'll move him, actually. You know. Okay. That way, you know. Just in case he... You see in the world, yeah. But you, yeah, totally do what you did last time and tell me what you want Flanagan to do. Um, all right. Um, you have two newcomers to your uh, to your group. Uh, you can also use Flanagan Adola, uh, the level one fighter. He's available for your use. Uh, he's decided that he wants to continue working with you. And uh, Bantha is going to lead everyone into hopefully the Mouth of Doom. Um, in Zelkor's Ferry, you have the following places. You have the Bristleback Inn that you're currently at, that you've stayed at for the past week. Uh, the stable that's nearby, the blacksmith, uh, a barracks that's on the opposite side of the inn, uh, which Odo Bristleback hires a group of mercenaries to permanently guard, and then they rotate out of Bardsgate. Uh, Rasmus's Pie, Rasmus Pie's trading post and a strange hovel that sits on the edge of the water on the far eastern side of the riverfront 
uh, facing the riverfront, a strange hovel where a, an, a man named Ulman deals in esoteric things. And that's what you have, and then the ferry itself and a gem cutter. That's what you have in Zelkor's Ferry. You're currently at the Bristleback Inn. I'll describe what you see here. Uh, tonight is, um, oh, actually, I gotta do July, I believe it's July 7th, 8th. It's one off, July 10th of Adventure Tide. It's summer. And it is a uh, mild weather and some of the obscurations um, from recent days have cleared up in the area and it's a clear summer night. Comfortable. There are uh, two tables that have uh, other groups of people here tonight other than Odo Bristleback who's uh, working the inn. Uh, there is a, a table that has a fairly well-dressed portly man. Uh, you noticed that uh, a group of people brought in two carts pulled by mules uh, yesterday. And uh, mm. they were brought down to the ferry and there were guards posted to guard them. And then uh, there are four people that are wearing brigandine uh, brigandines and uh, they have swords at their side and stuff. One of them's wearing a helmet. They're sitting and laughing and drinking and playing a gambling game of some sort. They're tossing something on the table. The uh, portly, better dressed man is sitting with them, silently watching and amused. At another table, you can see that there are six people looking in every way the opposite. Bedraggled and wearing just rags and uh, uh, sometimes uh, w one of the people, a, a scrawny man, is actually not even wearing a shirt. They, uh, they look in bad shape. Some of them look scraped up. They look around nervously um, and they're hunched over the table drinking the, some ale, um, not talking to anyone. That's what you see here tonight. The Bristleback Inn is a rugged waterfront inn uh, with uh, old stained waterlogged beams and rustic hard wooden tables and chairs that scrape loudly on elevated wooden floors that keep it from flooding. What do you do? So are we all, like, it's assumed that we all know each other? We're all together? Yeah, so everyone... Um, uh, uh, Helmus and Alaric, uh, you have met in the preceding week. That being said, I suppose we should also do introductions for everybody's sake, just briefly. Uh, starting with maybe Bantha. Sure. So leading um, the expedition. Bantha's like, uh, he's a pretty, uh, pretty confident. Um, he's got a bit of a, uh, he's beefy. He's wearing nice armor, but it's been beaten up. Um, he smiles a lot and he's been drinking a lot over the last week. Um, he has a big sword at his side. Um, he doesn't seem to be very, um, he doesn't seem to like get into very deep conversations, but he is, uh, discerning and maybe, maybe, uh, met up with Helmus and, uh, Dan, your character and hey, like, Elric, I haven't been able to Elric? change okay. the name. And, um, and just sort of like privately asked you if you were if you were looking to enter the the dungeons, told you to keep it quiet, but we're going in, and uh, has met up with you guys. He's charismatic, um, like I think he's really easy to be around. He seems pretty relaxed, and uh, he's definitely used to fighting. And that's that's about uh, all I got about him right now. All right, and then uh, what about Caden Graham? So Caden is a cleric, and uh, he's just a pretty average guy in most Estrex stuff. He's not very smart, and he's not very charismatic, but he just has the wisdom about him. And he, he's wearing chain mail, and he has a shield. And he carries a heavy mace at his side. And you notice that he's not drinking alcohol. He will drink milk or water, but 
no alcohol. And, uh, and he's sitting there silently, just kind of watching everything that's happening. All right, and then Folger. Folger's a former soldier who was shaken by a dreamlike experience in a, the world of Redmark before coming back home and taking his oaths against chaos. All right, and then we have Flanagan Odole, which um, uh, has been officially hired by Folger. Um, you come to learn that they have a business arrangement uh, to continue into the dungeon, at least for now. Flanagan had tra traveled here by himself. He's a also an unremarkably middle-height, dark-haired um, uh, man from uh, Albion. He's from the Isle itself, the Midderlands. And then you have uh, Helmus, which you've met in the past week. Uh, Helmus is another brother uh, of true believer of the Church of the One True God and the Lord of Light. Uh, he is also a teetotaler, <laughs> also nice. adorned Makes in sense. chain, <laughs> also adorned in chain yeah. and a shield. Um, his, I think he looks kind of, um, he looks a little bit like CD. Like, uh, sorry, he's middle aged. He's of like average uh, build, I guess. Um, but he has kind of like uh, a salt, peppery, stubbly beard, and um, his hair is like a little bit, uh, a little bit long and sort of unkempt, and he just looks like a little dodgy, I guess. Um, and his um, his name is because he his his teeth and his tongue and mouth are stained kind of black because he's uh, often chewing on some kind of root that's. Uh, yeah, stained his mouth, and um, uh, that's probably good. All right, uh, and then Alaric. Alaric's a uh, a uh, man dressed in uh, leather, carrying a uh, strong, sturdy uh, metal uh, covered wooden shield. Um, he is young, although he is also uh has extremely long mustaches and uh and uh somewhat long hair he looks relatively unkempt but not in a uh you know bum sort of way uh he's strong he's uh pretty hardy you know you, you see him lifting and picking up things and stuff like that but he also tends to drop things on his feet and uh constantly walks into things when he's talking um he is a somewhat impious man uh, and he you know you did get a little bit of his backstory of being raised in a monastery uh from the age of six along with his brother who is annoyingly uh religious uh, he's serving as a cleric these days uh and he's out really looking to make a name for himself uh he's tired of hearing about his brother all right. Cool. So name is important. Money is useful. Okay. Right. You all know each other from the past week. You're here at the end. What do you do? It's the night before. Um, I think uh, uh, Bainta kind of like leans over the table and uh, he's a little bit drunk. He can hold his liquor pretty well. I spent like a, double the money that I needed to to upkeep the last week on to just be drinking a lot um and he, he just he leans in he's like um he's like remember guys to uh tomorrow we leave tomorrow first thing we're taking off right at sun at sunrise don't tell anybody where we're going unless you think they're trustworthy we got to keep our lips sealed right keep it keep it just amongst us oh well, we, we can talk amongst ourselves okay yeah yeah i mean Take just her. like don't we don't want those Cretans at the next table following us and stabbing us in the back or some shit. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'm thing. gonna go work on something, and I, I just like get up and I I go outside. Um, where I've been going every once in a while, I gotta finish something up. I got a plan tomorrow. You got a plan? Yeah, 
I'll let you guys I go that. through. I saw that cart. Do we do we have anything like this for all of our riches? All of our riches, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I listened to the whole thing. So I'm, I tell you what, that'll be the first thing we buy when we uh, score it big. It's a good idea. Yeah, no one um, has found any riches yet. One of their members last week was murdered by a monster, uh, the likes of which no one had ever seen before. Of chain bell. Oh yeah, there's that. And then, I would make the differ on the murder thing, considering he charged. But uh, yeah. yeah, he found glory. Yes. Um, uh, I'll take an interest in the six people hunched, hunched over at their table who are looking kind of bedraggled. Okay. Um, you go over to, to talk to them, or do you just want to have you want to look at them? Uh, how how are they looking on their drinks? Uh, meager, as if I'll uh, go over. Uh, I'll ask Odo to to buy them around on or to provide them around on my coin. You um, uh you go over and tell that to Odo. He leans over the the bar and he's like, "That's awfully kind of you, stranger. Um, that's that's good of you." He smiles at you, actually, and uh, and he does that. He serves them drinks, and they're uh, some of them are still. They have this look in their eye, like the one, the shirtless one, has a thousand yard stare and doesn't even Excuse. know that Odo arrives. I'll head over with Odo and uh, ask if I can join them at their table for a moment. Um, a short woman. Um, uh, says, uh, yeah, of course, uh, if you can pull up a chair, I, uh, thank you so much, uh, for, for the drinks. It seems like the least I can do. It, you look like you've come to some trouble in your travels. They look at each other nervously, and you also notice from the bar that Odo is watching carefully. And, uh, they, uh, most of them don't respond. They continue this kind of somber quiet. But the woman says, these are very difficult places to travel through. And we have been through a lot. We're, like the merchant, we're hoping to get on a ferry and get to Bardsgate and leave this place. I'm surprised that you came from somewhere other than Bardsgate. Oh no, we came by the coast road. And then one of the uh, one of the other people there coughs. Uh, a man, it's like, <clears throat> as if you know, clearly to say, stop talking. Mm. I don't wish to pry over much, but is the place that you came from still there? Um, your charisma modifiers gives you a plus one. I. I don't know what the modifier is. I think that's right. What's your number? 13 or higher. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, she says, listen, stranger, um, I can I can tell you what we saw in our travels, but you seem like a nice man. Please don't ask where we came from. As you like. Just last week, we had a run-in with some beasts of chaos, not far outside the walls. And I'd like to find those gnolls. Yeah. I'm not even sure that I know what they're called. Well, I mean, I do. I don't know if Folger does. Oh, yeah. Um... And they took one of our own as we went exploring. If you have any insight into the movements of creatures like that in the area, we'd be appreciative if you'd share. Um, a, um, another woman at the table with a kind of squat um, uh, and, and wide face with curly, matted, dirty hair uh, that covers her face, soot covered in places that you can see, mumbles wildly to herself, the real monsters are people. And then the person is like, stop. Be quiet, Susan. I'll bear that in mind. 
And no one will know that I heard it from you. The woman, she says, thank you. And if you are as kind as you seem, it would be nice if you do encounter any patrols that you don't tell them that we're here. I wouldn't dream of it. Thank you, sir. If you come to any trouble while you're here in Zalcor's Ferry, one of our number will be staying at the inn. You can ask after me if the others aren't available to help, but you may be here some time working up your fee for the fairies to leave. The shirtless man then suddenly speaks up out of nowhere after being quiet for hours in the inn and says, You're trying to go to Rappanothic. Rappanothic no, we're going or... to Rappanothic. We're trying to come back. Uh, with the cash to make a difference. I'll go. If you'll have me. We need the money. And then the uh, the other man who is like... He's like... Uh, uh, he says... Um, <clears throat> dog is making weird noises. He says... Uh, Oda. We, this isn't necessary. We can, He said we can stay in the stable. It's fine. And uh, Oda is like... I'll go if you'll have me. You can come if you wish to earn your keep. Do you have any kit of your own, or will we need to provide that? I have just what you see, sir. And he's got like old tattered pants and uh, old uh, sh just sandals and no shirt. Then if you come with us, your first time will be as a porter. No sense throwing a life away. Thank you, sir. We leave in the morning. Thank you, sir. You'll meet us here. He uh, he gets up from their table, and then the man like reaches toward him, like Oda, no, and then and then Oda leaves. What is everybody else doing? I can't hear what was going on, so I didn't say anything. Uh, there was a pair that you mentioned at the beginning that. Um, that were at another table. Uh, while that's going on, since I figure he's talking to them, I wanted to see if the people that are at the other table are making any note of that. And just in general, while I'm drinking, and I am drinking alcohol, um, I uh, I just keep an eye out there. I might be interested in looking further, closer up, but I want to first find out what I can see about them. There, uh, there's a well-dressed man here. He has one of those, I can't remember what they're called, but huge beret things that kind of goes over a hood that's been flipped back over, you know, in the okay. kind of early Renaissance style. And, um, and uh, he's a bit portly, and he's just sitting and drinking. And uh, they have food on their table, um, and there are uh, four of them. Uh, and okay. they are all, uh, one of them is helmeted, they have armor and weapons, and they are, as you approach, clearly playing knuckle bones. One of them uh, No, is. I actually first, w while the conversation was going on, I just wanted to see them, see if they took any note of that. And then, uh... It looks I'm like they're sure oblivious. Yeah. Okay. So they're that's right. Now I remember, they were the ones gambling, yes. Gambling. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, anything else? Uh, I'm gonna yeah, wait until I, our guy comes back. I will make okay. a duplicate uh, hireling here. Does anyone else want to take on the torchbearer, uh, or do you, or do you want to keep them, Folger? Are you? I'm gonna probably have an in dungeon limit of five, <laughs> <laughs> um, just because having like twenty hirelings, there's no need. There's no, not yet anyway. Um, the quality of hireling will matter more later than the number, but. Uh, that sure. doesn't mean that you can't have a large number of people that work for you, though, per your Christmas. Especially trip. like having, uh, you know, ones who limp a little bit with us. <laughs> right. I hope it doesn't come to that, but... Hmm. <laughs> that, that came up this weekend. Uh, yeah. they, they were like, well, which one, which one of us is the slowest? Somebody was like... Push, push, push. <laughs> oh, but anyway, I jest. Um... One thing I once he does come back, because I was waiting to see when he comes back, um, I hear about 
he's going to be coming with us to carry things and stuff like that because he's not. It, I asked him if he's. Uh, it, it, first of all, his name was what again? Oda. Oda. Okay. And uh, Oda. Hi, I'm Alaric. Uh, uh, did you ever engage in any martial uh, background? You know. Those, those stats like are that. wrong, by the way. Those are not the correct stats. Oda is level zero. He's a level zero human. So um, I just ask him, you know, like, uh, just so I get a feel yeah. for what his background is. Were you a merchant? Were you a guard? Uh, well, sir, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I'd like to, if, if there's anything I can do, I, I would like to not tell you where I came from or what I was. Okay. Well, let me ask you, this is my, that was my polite way of getting to the point of, can you handle yourself in a, do you know how to hold a weapon and use it if you need to? I can hold a weapon and use it, sir. Okay. Well then, since you have no gear, and we do not wish for you to get into combat, but we also don't want you to be standing there with only prayers to protect you, I happen to have a pair of hand axes. I would lend you one. And, uh, and... You know, if you wish to, uh, if you have any ability with a sling, I could lend you that as well. The rocks you can keep. I believe that, I actually didn't see this when I was looking, but I believe morale is not defined in the system. It just says, again, referee, do whatever you want. And so, to tell you my mind on that, I would basically plan to steal it from BX, because I think it's a, an incredible system. I love morale, yeah. Morale is incredible. AD&D, morale is great. So you, you can expect his morale to go up, like obviously as you're treating him well. So he takes the hand axe and he, and he says, thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I'll try to do my best. Sure thing. And I asked him if he's competent or feels competent with a uh, sling, because I'm pr rather incompetent with it, but I just like to have a, a, a distance weapon. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I can use a sling. Well, then you probably can use it way better than I can. And I pass it to him. You can consider that a gift. Is it too late in the day for us to axe, do any shopping? Uh, no, no, that's it's there for yeah. That's that's totally what it's there for. Okay, I'll I'll supplement that by um, getting him a set of leather. It's about all that I can afford to get him, but no sense sending someone out to their death completely naked. Yeah, good. Leather's perfectly fine. And a shirt for crying out loud. Yeah. Okay, then we'll pray over him. Oh, nice. Because he has no money. Nice. All right. Yeah, his morale goes up, um, and uh, he is somewhat outfitted for the journey. He's got uh, leather armor is uh, minus five gold pieces. They actually do have leather here. In fact, they recently got flush with it, and uh, they were... They have several leather crafts that were brought in, so you're able to get a, oh, some leather armor. Yeah, picked up a leather shirt. Well, Is it human leather? Yes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Although it looks strange, and it looks mm. red. Uh, meaning all of the ah. leather, it's bold into a, a reddish appearance, whatever animal it was taken from. Cool. Um, Isaiah, are you going to do, you have any thoughts on anything you want to do? Uh, not especially. I think, um, uh, Helmus had been a little bit, uh, only sort of paying attention and he was sort of, uh, fingering the, the wooden holy symbol around his neck, um, the Trinity, the great tree and sort of, uh, watching the flames dance in the hearth. And he did, um, uh, kind of sit up when there was someone kind of, I think you guys jokingly mentioned something about riches and he kind of like sat up and started paying a bit more attention at that point. But no, I don't think he's going to do anything in particular. Cool. Um, there's one thing that Bainta wants to be doing outside is a little side project he's been working on where he's been gathering uh, reeds and grasses from the, the waterfront and, um, pulling a bit of hair off the back of mules and donkeys. Um, he might have bought a hide, like a, a, a furry, like a cloak or something. And he's outside with a big mug of beer and he's kind of cursing to himself and he's got this, uh, I think maybe he's taken a chunk of bark off a tree and he's carved holes in it 
and he's fitting it over his head. He's like making a mask and he's like poked holes with, uh, with his dagger into the top and he's making like this uh, mane of grass and fur coming off of it. Um, and he's trying to make it look as, as fierce as possible. Um, and uh, I think he's just kind of finishing it up and then he, he puts it inside. Uh, you can let me know, Ross, if you want me to spend a little bit of money on like a, a big fur cloak or something. Um, so he he he, uh, he puts it in he puts it to the side and he he goes in and he uh, goes over to the table and whoever's there and he says guys come out here I want to show you something and then he he goes outside um, before he doesn't wait for you he he sort of like walks quickly back outside and uh, goes around the corner and puts on the mask and the cloak and waits for whoever's going to come outside if you if you spend a f- f- five gold pieces to buy a heavy woolen winter cloak um, okay. I, I'll say that you can get a plus two to a saving throw with wisdom to see if like you make a really good uh, you know over a period of a week to try to make a crazy Sasquatch outfit yeah I want to look like a beast uh, as much as like a with any as, as reptilian as possible I mean this isn't I'm not well we'll see maybe I'll roll really well yeah. um, but I, I, maybe the role is like I don't know who do any of you come outside yes yeah, oh it. yeah I'm fine. yeah I'm yeah Kevin scrolled up okay yeah so I think like you go out and like no one he's just kind of gone and then he comes he, he like comes around the corner and he goes Rawr! <laughs> And, and tries to like uh j- just sees if it like it gets a reaction of he's kind of like down low and then he's like what do I, how do i look do you think and i can see really- things in the in the cave well folger will nearly brain you with a hand axe before realizing it's you <laughs> yeah, yeah so he, like, he's sold their weapon. i'm convinced well done so this is a what you, what kind of roll a wisdom roll I don't think this needs a roll. Never mind. I changed my mind. <laughs> you have I spent, a... I spent five gold though. I've got this a heavy woolen cloak and a mask. Yeah. Okay. The, so here's what the I'm the heavy thinking. woolen cloak. I'm gonna say is um, three pounds. Okay. Got it. Um. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, those little little things that were in that cave. Um, well, we only saw, and I'm explaining this to Helmus outside, um, to Helmus and, um, Elric. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, like we saw these, uh, these little guys, they look like, uh, like little serpent folk or something or gibbering. And, uh, well, they ran away, but we listened to it in a door and there was a few more. So you never know, maybe they're not going to give us a problem, but if there's a lot of them, I thought maybe one of us could put this thing on and act like they're king or something like that and who knows maybe we can uh you know have uh get uh become their leader or something or tell them what to do tell them to tell them to tell them to fuck off or whatever better than anything to buy us time seems good to me all right normally i'm against deception but these are beasts of chaos you do what we can my man, I just slap you on the back. All right. Well, I feel pretty good about that. I've been working on that all week. It's been a little bit of a surprise. I thought I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> it was ghastly, surprisingly. Good, good. Um, like so I think that thing you did with the sticking out that was good. Oh, well, you—that was good. Okay, good. I'll, I'll, it's a good touch. All right. Catches the attention. Makes you look noted. bigger. Noted. So uh, yeah, I think. Um, Bainta packs that carefully into his pack. Um, and I, I don't think I have anything more I want to do except uh, like maybe go around to everybody and say and suggest that we leave at first light to get the most out of the day tomorrow. Hey, I'm going to cut myself off. I'll let Bainta know that I've hired a porter, someone to help us carry things back in case we uh, get a good haul. Just nods. Who's which? Uh, who was that? His name's Oda. Oh yeah. He was from this group that just came into town. They looked down on their luck. They were a little cagey about where they came from. We'll see if it's uh, we'll see if it's a good idea to keep them around long term. But he's motivated. 
Those half star folk at the other table? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're on the run from something. You'll Jesus hardly recognize him in the shirt. The guy without a shirt. Mm. Well, he has one now, but yeah. <laughs> and an axe. Oh, good lord. <laughs> he gave I need the guy an axe. Okay, I, I go in and get another drink, and uh, <laughs> I look over and I see it, I do a double take and, and look at him. I, I just shake my head. I don't even say anything to him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't think I'll do anything for the rest of the night. Anything major. <laughs> he turns around and glares at you holding the axe like like a perfectly normal person. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be good. Got it. Um, we'll talk tomorrow. I don't even want to hear from you <laughs> tonight, buddy. Okay. All right. Um, the, uh, you find your Spartan accommodations in nearby outbuildings with straw filled beds and, uh, sleep through the night at least as best as you can. And, um, do I have to take care of anything with my extreme fabulous wealth? Uh, drinks or lodgings for anything? Do, do you, I, I was not involved in that the first time. Uh, oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, because it's just um, so it's just one gold piece per day. Uh, so that's your, your lodging and food. Um, at, so the end, at the end of the way this gaming convention works is that now it's the day uh, you have uh, an hour and 40 or so minutes of real time that constitutes about 16 to 18 hours. Uh, I'll kind of simulate all right, the sky, you know, the sun is getting higher in the sky. It's a clear, sunny summer day currently. Um, and then I'll say, oh, it's sun setting, so on and so forth to as the time elapses. At the end, you don't have to worry about returning. You automatically return exhausted and you make it back to Zolkor's Ferry. Um, hopefully. And then okay. you would spend a gold piece, you know, every day that you stayed there. If you do not spend a gold piece, you can stay in the stables and there's a chance that your goods could be stolen. Yeah, I think somebody covered mine last time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so we're all gathered out there and uh, what's his name? Odd? Is it, how do you say his Oda. name? The Oda? Oda. Um, I just, uh, I walk over to him. In the, I think this is like maybe why Bainth has got charisma. Like he's he's kind of a gruff leader. Um, like he's kind of showing he doesn't give a shit, I guess, a little bit to him. He walks over and he just looks him up and down and he he pulls at the leather, this red leather, and he like pulls it and and he and he like and he smells it and he looks at him and then he looks down at the axe and he says, uh, you, "You can use that. You can use that." He's like, "Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I can use it. The leather has a." recently boiled gamey scent to it it was recently made okay. i hope you can keep up and that's all i say to him yes, um sir. i and i uh, i guess i i don't know if this is like i feel like in character as the caller i'm just gonna be be bad being the um i uh i say uh, maybe we should uh take the same way we took last time follow up the ridge uh, see if anybody's messed around with uh, Wolf uh, Wolf's Cairn, and uh, take the same route. I what do you all say? Anything to get us there quickly? We've got work to do. Well, I try to annoy, uh, avoid the uh, area with the gnolls. You think we should not take the same way? Or maybe just be careful. Well, I think if we've decided that we want to keep the knolls off the ridge, we can go that way. If we don't consider that a priority, then we should have not even go that way because we've already been there. Right. But uh, we may want to keep the knolls off the ridge. Instead. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's better to yeah, like go the same way. If they're there, then we know that they're going to keep coming back. But if they're not, like it's sort of like clearing, keeping our path clear or something. Yeah. yeah. If we keep patrolling in force, then they'll get the idea that they either have to bring an army of their own or that they better seed the territory right sure. plus we can just see if the stick we put a stick in the ground where that viper pit was and see if it's still there and just get it get a sense of uh if there's any differences uh if other people have passed this way there's a thought 
What my pay in the back for Gustrom? Yes. Okay. How does that sound to you, Isaiah? I'm um, just catching up, but sounds good. Okay. I explain. I point up. I go, see that uh, hill over yonder? I point to the south. And uh, we went that way last time. Uh, someone almost fell in a pit of vipers. But we got him out and uh, we climbed that hill and there was knolls on top. And they took out one of our party. We buried him on top of that hill. And just over past that way is the, the entrance we took called the Mouth of Death or Doom or whatever they call it. Doom. Follow that ridge right back and it leads right to it. I assume that you all travel at a normal pace. Like you're not trying to... Okay. Um, the visibility today is very good such that you can see across the riverfront the faint horizon in indicating out to the east that there's a hill rising on the other side of the, the river and many mountains to the north on the opposite side of that river. Um, and you can see uh, on the other side of the saddle there's another smaller hillside and off in the distance down to the south you can see a large hill that's bald surrounded by a forest down at the bottom um, and uh, to your south west this way you can see forests that are stretching off into the distance and uh, a road uh, that uh, splits going east and south and uh, that's what you can see from where you are i don't know if you can okay. see those pings in the darkness could you see the pings in the dark talking oh, yeah good okay yeah like as if it's off in the distance okay are those um, the lines on the map a road or, or creeks, or is there a road alongside uh, the creek? It's contour, I think. Uh, these are contour oh, lines. This is yeah. actually a road. Oh, it is. Oh, I thought okay. that was a river. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, I guess, so uh, what do you all think? We'll just take the same path, which is right along this ridge to the bottom end of the next hill on the on this uh, ridge, and we can yeah. see the end. The there. knolls are yeah. close to, to Zelda's oh, well, area. I think we should eyeball see if they're coming back and stuff yeah Even this is don't engage, we should at least know right this is where the cairn was where we are right now basically right of should note be. you you do see the cairn um and you do see the uh, the grisly display of the heads on pikes rotting and covered in flies and smelling horrible it looks like uh, either no one has seen it or they must have gotten the message because it doesn't appear other than the the rotten and smoldering remains of their campsite from a week ago, we see no indication that anyone has been here in the past week. Okay. That's pretty cool, actually. Nice. Not even scavengers. We must have really done a number on them. Not even the Saturday group. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to suggest, what do you all think? We just continue the way we, we went, right? Straight yeah. south. We okay. know where we're going, so we just uh, I just wanted to know if the uh, Knolls are back, so... Yeah. Because for all you know, they, they may know where they, we're going and wait for us when we get out, and we may be not in the best condition. Right. Um, let's see here. A few things. Uh, several hours pass. Uh, it's uh, as you cross several miles traveling up and down the hills, uh, rocky hills forested on the near side and then the opposite side of the saddle it's barren uh, you can see uh, as i said off in the distance you can see the hill rising on the other side of the forest um, and uh, otherwise that's what you can see from this hillside when you get there uh, and this the, the, the things i said before as well um, as you get closer to this hillside you can see this forest here across the road um, the road, uh, you don't see anything traveling up and down it. It's uh, vacant. And from what you can tell from the hillside, the road is desperately overgrown and untended uh, and unmaintained and hasn't been maintained. Um, the forests are mossy and hoary and uh, thick and old. Cool. And, okay. and this is swamp primarily land or what kind of terrain? Yeah, I would call it like a, a marshy wetland. Marshy wetlands, okay. Uh, so uh, given where it is, a lot of the hillsides are reeks. There are these rocky jutting things uh, that oftentimes um, might have grass, but otherwise they're just rocky. Yeah. 
and the forests are, are very wetland type forests. Can we see across to the entrance to the south from here, to the cave entrance we took last time? Is it um, visible? You see the hillside, but from this is miles away, actually. So no, you can't see that from here. That's like almost, that's beyond human vision, about seven, eight miles away. Oh, wow, okay. I just point in the direction to the uh, Helmus and uh, the other, I keep forgetting your character's name. Um, Alaric. Alaric. And I just say it's, um, the entrance is over that way. Um, just past, see, the, see those big trees there? And I just sort yeah. of like give you the landmarks of where, where we're headed. Be another hour or so yet. A couple hours. There it is. And I'm looking, trying to see, you know, get this in my sight in case I have to uh, come back here. Okay. And uh, where do you go from here? Uh, I guess like we'll just, uh, as the crow flies, head straight straight there to the same route we took last time well you know what what do you what do you think should we go back to that little homestead to see if anything's changed there too or forget it let's go straight unless yeah, okay. there was I, yeah unless there's something about the homestead we care about right now let's keep a target no. yeah, yeah okay i just the explain that there was a there was a building there that we saw that uh, was empty but uh there's nothing useful there okay. um ping, ping where you want to go um, as kind of like your direction, and then I'll see if anything oh, okay. happens. Uh, what do you all think of something like this? Is up there somewhere? Yeah, that seems right. Okay. <clears throat> um, it's already exhausting work. To make your way up and down these reeks and into the marshland uh, as you make it into the forest, you can see a hillside, um, a much steeper and taller hillside ahead. On the side of the hill, you can see a huge stone demon face carved into the hillside. Uh, the open mouth is 10 feet tall with gaping stone maw, and there are onyx pitch black stones leading down into uh, uh, the darkness. Uh, you can see other stones surrounding the st that uh, the uh, the stone face. That's the place. That's it right there. Um, you can also, from the forest, uh, as you were approaching, uh, you could also see um, off in the distance the a ruined cottage uh, that looked like it had just been fallen in and abandoned. Somebody had tried to build a home here at once. I look okay. around the mouth and see if I see any obvious signs of uh, of heavy traffic here. Do you go up? You all climb up the hill and go to the mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And we did that last time, so it might uh, we might be able to notice a difference if there's anything that's changed. Um. Uh, I will say that that will take 10 minutes uh, to do if you're trying to find uh, any signs of somebody's been here, um, you know, tracks and also tampering and stuff I, like that. Yeah, I my suggestion was more of a, uh, I'm telling the group, my suggestion was more of a just to see if it looks anything, you know, like heavy traffic is what I meant by that as opposed to looking for tracks if you think it's oh. worth finding out no no yeah uh, okay you don't see any in you don't see any evidence of like heavy traffic coming in yeah like people dragging big things out or anything right. like that yeah okay um well i uh look at the uh odom what's his name uh oda and um i take out a torch and uh i light it and i pass it to oda all right. Um, and actually, uh, the other, who is our other, who's the other person that you, Folger, Folger, you have? Flanagan. Flanagan. Um, and I take a, my, a second torch and light it with the other one and I give it to Flanagan. And um, I don't, I don't say anything. I just give it to them. And then I, I draw my sword and uh, my shield and I just uh, I say, you all ready? Yeah, Caitlin gets everything ready. Sword, I mean, Mason shield. All right. 
You know what? And we go. Um, maybe, do you think I should put this mask on? How durable do you think it is? Not, not very. Wait till you think you might have use of it. We don't want it to get damaged while, uh, okay. while just traveling. Right. There's a room down there, and it was pretty big, and there was yeah. at least four or five exits from it. Um, so let's... Uh, oh, right. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Um, what's your marching order? Just so I know, like, who's up front and that sort of thing. I, I want to be up front. All right. Uh, so you can put Caden behind him. Alaric, then Caden. Who else is up front? Who has plate mail? Folger will stay up front. Yeah, Folger's I have front. leather armor. Right. You can take the second rank if you like. We do have people who are yeah, shelled up a little harder. All right. Well, then, yeah, because I'm also uh, negatives in dexterity. <laughs> yeah, I think it was too wide. Uh, What's Thomas right. doing, Isaiah? I was just going to say he's probably uh, like alongside Caden as well. So sort of near the front. Everybody's pushing against front. I guess uh, Bainta will stick to the back then for now. I'm young. I, you know, I'm trying to uh, be special. At various okay. points, just because for some reason this does not load on my machine very well at all, uh, I have two things so that I can record this. I'm going to, you'll see me span so just so you know what's going on, why I'm doing it, if, if somebody's like, I go check out this thing, it'll actually span over to that person. Okay. Um, you come down uh, these stone stairs, um, and uh, it, um, let's see. Uh, as I said, the, the stairs are like an onyx black. They're solid black. The stones here are these large stones that must have been carried in a very, very long time ago. Uh, it looks like they could have weathered a great deal. The walls are also stone and, uh, and, and the ceiling. Uh, when this place was constructed, it was constructed to last for ages. Uh, you can see alcoves on the east and west walls, and ahead of you is a door. Um, and it is dark here, and the air is old, and the air is, um, how do I put this? There hasn't been any air circulation here for a very long time, and your torches struggle to even stay lit. That's a good sign. We saw the... Uh... I point to the east, or the alcove to the east, and I say, and I whisper, we heard through a door some of those creatures that way last time. And then I point to the northeast and say, that's where more of them came from last time as well. Um, I, I um, <clears throat> So we had a plan. I guess maybe what we need to we want to do right now is just discuss how we want to approach this. Um, we were talking about, like, Last time we discussed trying to uh, be um, system systematic with it and not uh, just like take a straight beeline somewhere, but just sort of like make sure our back is being covered. So maybe check all the doors here before we proceed. I don't know what you all think though. That, that was our, our idea last time, but whatever whatever works. Any thoughts? Uh, check out the area north of the stairs. I to see if it loops around. I like depths first, though not literal depths first. I like uh, go go a distance and then come back. I'm I'm partial to that this time because not literally go down. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm I'm partial to depth first this time as well because um, I don't have enough money for another week's upkeep unless we find some gold. And if <laughs> right. we just go one room in each direction, That's I helpful. wonder if we're going to find anything. Okay. All right. Well, why don't why don't we just uh, at least see what's this room like? The the we don't even know what the extent of this room is at this sure. point. Right. Sure. Okay. So, how about um, yeah? Why don't we just uh, circle counterclockwise around this yeah. room? Great. Um, 
we don't have a thief or a scout of any description, do we? Ah. Uh, Sounds like no. Not me. Well, then the marching order will have to suffice. I, uh, Boulder will... Oh, oh, oh sorry, go ahead. Bef don't move your tokens yet is all I'm going to... Uh, but go ahead, tell me, tell me the plan for sure. Folger will plan, I guess. How do you feel about starting at the bottom and then going counterclockwise? Is that what you, that's what you wanted? Sure. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Then Folger will start by approaching the southern door. Um, as he crosses the threshold, he's going to start looking best as he can for any marks on the floor or wall that indicate, I don't know. He's not a traps guy, but he's wary. So the place wanna, was a big demon's head. Let me make sure I yeah. understand the whole yeah. plan, uh, and then yeah. uh, so because I don't want to focus too much on. I'm going to basically kind of fix the tabletop so you can see what's going on here for the plan, because uh, this won't affect that. I don't think. Okay, so the full circle of the room is about 120 feet, so that's going to be one round uh, for the I person see. with the heaviest armor. So uh, I will say that it's actually going to take two rounds because you're also searching alcoves and doors and taking a look. Okay. So because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take your torches and everybody should be able to see that, right? Um, up above. It's gone. Um, I'm basically going to put some lights down here. Let me actually just reveal this so that you can see where they're at. Um, controlled by all. Oh my gosh. Okay. I see. So this is what we're... Actually, let me just... Uh, it's a good sized space. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a very large... That's round. a big square. And then as we go, I will... Uh, is the map being moved or is that me when I was trying to adjust something? Uh, no, it's not being moved. Yeah, I think... Okay, it's, then uh, it's a lag adjustment. on my adjustment. Got it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so can everybody see the room now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So don't worry about the room yet. I'll, we'll go kind of step by step through the plan, starting with Folger. So Folger, you said you take a look at the south door, right? Yeah. And you go, okay, uh, you go up and look at it. I'll tell you what you see. There's a pentacle uh, carved in the stone over the top of this alcove uh, leading yeah. into a uh, door on the other side. The door is made of stone. Um, and uh, the door is closed. Uh, which way is the pentacle pointing? Uh, it's upright. Am I... Let me see here. Sure. So I don't... Am I, do I have this wrong? It's one of those, like... Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, this, the star point is up. Um, is there a door in each of those alcoves? Like, I, I can't really tell with the map. Um, I can see on some of them, but just because of the roll 20 thing. Yeah. Each they, of those alcoves has a door in it? Uh, no. Yeah. So um, when you take a look, you can see that this one uh, uh, has a door. Um, if you guys take two rounds to search them, I'll just tell you what's in what you see in the room. Is that okay? Sure. sure. Okay. So yeah. uh, I'll tell you what you see here. So starting with where Folger is, alcove, this has a door. Uh, moving over to this alcove, you can see a skull carved into the stone over to the top of this alcove. Um, it, uh, you can see a door in that alcove. Um, okay. Here, there is a... Uh, uh, over top of the alcove, you can see the carving of a goat's face, curling horns and narrowed eyes and small fangs visible at the corner of its mouth. And uh, you see a door in that alcove as well. Um, I might be wrong. There might actually be doors. Uh, the, the northern alcove, uh, there's no carving. Um, but... Uh, you can see on the opposite side, there's a door. Uh, this one here, uh, the northeast, uh, there is a, um, a wolf's head carved in the stone above this alcove. 
and uh, you see a door. I'm getting my corridors mixed up. There are doors. Um, and then this one to the southeast, you see uh, a carving of a hand over top of the alcove. Um, and also a door. So, sorry, I got my tunnels mixed up. Yes, there are doors in the alcoves with uh, all but one having carvings or symbols over top of them. Are they all stone doors? Yes. Mm. Right. Well, and those co those creatures came from the north last time, and they were also through the door with the skull. It wasn't. Didn't somebody have a rumor about like beware the hand or something? I don't remember that, but that yeah. sounds like it wasn't me. Oh, maybe it was me. If you remember that, it sounds like a good place to not start. Right. Ah. Yes. I heard a rumor last week. On my way in, some people leaving the ferry, they said, uh, beware the hand if you go into the mouth of doom. I heard a rumor that there was a miles long dark tunnel that connects to the main part of Rapalothic. Hmm. At this point, uh, uh, it's been six or seven hours in the day, half your day journeying here and exploring this room, about half your day has passed. Okay. Uh, so any thoughts, anybody, on what you, anything to do in this room or elsewhere? Pick a door besides the hand and yeah. go for it. Yeah, let's pick a path. How about the, uh, the, the south non-hand door would be my vote, but I don't. And let's go deep if uh, we can. That's a cool one. Pentacle? Yeah. I mean, they're all pretty imposing. Yeah, yeah. Carvings. I feel like we're not going to do yeah. worse with one than any other, other than the hand. Other than the it's hand. I'll avoid the hand with... because of the tip. You don't want to spit at a tip. There is the one without the carving, but... Oh, yeah, that's the one they want you to go down. That's true. That's full of traps. What are you, th what are you thinking, Isaiah? Uh, I don't have a strong preference. I mean, without anything to go on, it's pretty random. So if, okay. yeah. All right. Let's let's just let's drive south then. Yep. All right. Um uh everyone just be quiet for a sec. I'll uh go up to the door and listen at it. All right. Um uh Let me do a couple of things here. You listen at the door, and um, you're you're certain you don't hear anything on the other side of the door, but you can hear like there's kind of like this old crack in the door where the the integrity of it has has fallen through, and you're able to put your ear up to that place where there's a, a cleave in the stone of the door. And there's this crack, and you listen. There's nothing on the other side of the door that you can tell, but in the distance. You think you hear a uh, a sliding, skittering noise? Something's in there. Um, my God, I don't think it was walking. A little creature or something. Um, I have my I pull out my shorts. I have my my sword out. Um, say, well, let's let's open it and go. I I'll wait. I say, someone open the door then, and I'll have my shield up and my sword. Um, I know we have a marching order, but I guess just, just because I'm up there now, I'll just, I'll stand right where the door is going to open with my sword, my shield up and my sword ready in case something's right on the other side. Okay. All right. You yeah. open, we'll file in, in the order. Okay. You all can move your tokens, uh, to, to whatever it'll be. Um, um. You, yeah, my thing is kind of laggy for some reason. Weird. Click. It's a little laggy on my end, too. I wonder oh, if it's... I have, like, a gig. It does that. Yeah. You slowly yeah. move the stone door, 
and um, and you see a corridor on the other side. And immediately, as soon as you you slide it open, and and you have there, um, you know, Flanagan with his torch with you, um, you can see at the torchlight on the other side that there are some figures slumped on the opposite end of this corridor uh, to your right front. Uh, there are several of them. The small figures slumped on the ground. And um, as you kind of peer in the torchlight on the other side, you can see that these figures are... Uh, let me see here. They are little dog people. Mm. Um, ah. And uh, there are several of them obviously dead and uh, having been torn apart and partially eaten on the ground nearby. Oh. Man. This is what we saw last time. Oh, okay. Is it? Yeah. I didn't know we would, you guys went this way. We didn't. We didn't. Yeah. So something big has entered this place and making its own. Good thing to make note of. Yeah. I'll, uh, who's the torchbearer who's beside me? That's Flanagan. I, uh, Flanagan, come on. And I step right out into the hallway, um, hoping he's going to come with me, take a look up and down the hall. Flanagan does that, steps out. Has a uh, blade in one hand and the torch in the other. He says, all right. Yeah, uh, you look down at the edge of the torchlight. You can see that at the end of the corridor where there's these bodies slumped on the ground is a door. And then there are two other doors further down the corridor. And otherwise, uh, the corridor continues on into the darkness. Okay. Uh, what do you think, everybody? I would vote to go past the dead bodies because the sooner we find out if there's something nearby the better yeah while we're still all fresh did they have anything uh of value uh yeah uh do you take uh the time to sift through the torn up meat and torn apart little people little dog people and see if you can find anything yeah we probably should Okay. Let's we can scavenge on the way back if we're Well how about we how about we do that and also just uh maybe a couple of us can scout to the east. Um just to just to the extent of the maybe there's some demon watching us just outside of Torchlight. I I would I'd love to just see if this I, I don't want to know. Hallway is <laughs> Yeah. I'll head down with Flanagan in that case. Okay. Right. I'll walk with you. Flanagan says, all right. Mm -hmm. um, and Flanagan starts to go further down the corridor. Um, let's oh, see. Listen. You uh, Eventually, you make it to where you can see a T-intersection at, uh, at the far end of this, uh, this corridor uh, oh, going left and right, and you can see that there are more doors. There are two doors here to the south, oh, right two three, and there's one to, one to the north. Right. I lost my token in the darkness. Okay, <laughs> let me see. Uh, let me do a couple of things here. The screen moved when I was trying to move it. it? Yeah, the screen is moving. That's why it was tricking me. You can uh, scroll. Don't okay. like. Uh, I'm using a Mac, and I can do a two finger. Okay, this is big in here. Um, so I, yeah, I guess like I get up to the, we uh, I get up to there with um, uh, Folger and uh, just l quietly and Flanagan and look at that T intersection and uh, just whisper. Um, and I guess everybody else is back looking at those bodies. Um, what do you think? You just get to that intersection and look up and down the hall. Or are we pushing too far here? Um, it's a lot of doors behind us. That could cut us off. All right. No, not. Let's get back then. Um, meanwhile, uh, Caden, um, 
Caden, you were searching the the three bodies. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, searching the three bodies, you find um, eighty-one silver pennies uh, of a strange minting that these little creatures had taken off of somebody. You said eighty-one. Was like. Would you Would you say Isaiah? I was just going to say, Helmus was like probably visibly unsettled, like uh, entering the maw of this thing and sort of like walking down the uh, the obsidian slabs. Um, and I think he's probably like turned to like look back to see like one last glimpse of the light through the oh, opening goodness. above, wow, if, yeah. if that's possible. <laughs> and sort of like. I think um, the, the mutters, light, because like, you, you go down the stairs so as you go, the light actually, you know, kind of dims and you see the the light just disappear from your, yeah. Yeah. So like at that point where it's like the last, where it's blinking out, he's going to like, you know, make note of it and utter a prayer to the Lord of the light. And, um, then he kind of like finds his resolve and like steps through the doorway. And then I guess he sees the other, <laughs> the other priest, like looting through these like ravaged corpses. And is like kind of like shocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, for chaos. Are you? Are you? Are you? <laughs> is this noticeable? Like, uh, do you, <laughs> you have a holy symbol? Are you a servant of chaos? No, no. He said. He said these are foul. Yeah, they're beasts foul of beasts of chaos. Oh, oh, oh! And, I only caught part of that. Sorry. Worthy of this death and punishment. These are definitely not human creatures. Uh, that doesn't mean that, like you as a human would hate anything that arises from the mythic underworld. Uh, yeah, he doesn't really know if they're beast of chaos right. or not. Yeah, right. But it but it wouldn't be unreasonable to 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 think that either, yeah. Also they you know anyways, yeah. They did uh, they did lose a friend to strange creatures. Awesome. What's next? So you've searched those bodies then? Yes. Okay. I mean, I guess we uh, come back, Folger, you think? Yeah, I think I think we start cracking some of these doors to make sure that we're not cutting off our own retreat. At least this one here. Uh, it's almost right across from our retreat, and I point to the one just south of where Bainta is right now. Okay. Then Folger yep. and Flanagan will fall back to him and be ready to enter the door as he cracks it open. I say, uh, don't forget, I heard something in here. Something was hissing and moving around, and I don't see it right now, so... I'm keeping um, a straight eye to the west past the uh, bloody bodies. Okay. Yeah, I look up at the ceiling as well, like, is there anything up there <laughs> looking down on us? No, you can, so every once in a while, you can feel uh, where the integrity has given way in parts of the stone ceiling, and there are little mounds of dirt and uh, grime and stuff that have gathered, and it actually makes it, even though the pathway here is about 10 feet wide in the corridor, uh, there are places where you have to kind of step up over things where the ceiling has given in partially, or walls. And um, so every once in a while, little bits of sediment will fall down on your shoulder. You don't see anything where there appears to be anything up above you or cracks. It's about 15 to 20 feet tall. Okay. Uh, yeah, Bainta will turn around and make sure that there's at least two or three people prepared. And he, he nods to them and he says, I'm going to open the door. And then he puts his shoulder against it and just just pushes the door open um, with his sword hand, I guess. And his shield is in his other hand. Uh, this will be their shield up just in case something comes out. You, uh, you push the stone door open and it actually gives way on its hinge, <laughs> kind of slides off onto a side and slides down onto the floor, but you're able to kind of like, it just hangs there now as this big this slab of stone um, off the, the old rusty iron hinge. And uh, you look inside, you see a stone room here. It's got a very rusted old iron fire pit that's set uh, beneath a small hole in the ceiling. Oh. 
Okay. Um, I can only see a little bit. I'm going to uh, gesture again to Flanagan um, and uh, and uh, check the corners. I say, uh, watch the sides here, and I'll step in again with Flanagan, hopefully giving us some light. Doors are corners. Yeah, for reals. Okay, uh, you go inside, and that's all you see in here. You just see um, old an old kitchenette, an old, long, cold iron fire pit uh, with a small hole in the ceiling. It's very small. It's only like about you know a foot in diameter or so mm. uh, up above the fire pit and a kitchenette. How high up is it? Uh, about 15 feet high. Good. So we should look for where this egress is later and uh, and see if uh, we might find uh, a way in if we need it without going the stairs. Yeah, Bainta will actually look up. Like he'll um, first just put his hand over the fire pit to see if there's any warmth. And if not, uh, he'll sort of step in it and look up the chimney to see if he can see light up above. There's no warmth, and you don't see any light. Uh, it looks like um, probably this was ventilation, um, and so uh, only a very small just creature. And stuff. Yeah, that was probably not wide enough to fit through. Not yeah. for a normal person. No. Okay. But it it probably do us some good just to leave this door open in the meantime, if we were yep. having an airflow issue before. Cool. Yeah. Mm, good idea. Does anybody want to do anything in this room? Okay. Come back to it and hole up if we get in trouble, but other than that, yeah. no. All right. Well, where next then? Could go back out into the hall. Still staring at these dead bodies. I, I want to know what did this, or want to know that it's far away. Yeah, you want to go past them. Is there any indication that these... Um, Dogmen were moving in some direction or other when they got killed. Yeah, it uh, it it looks like there was some kind of scramble. Uh, one of the problems about being able to figure that out is that they've also looked like they've been. Um, it looks like they had f just how do I put this? Fallen in place and since then been dragged around and eaten apart. Uh, oh. Okay. I so see. Like tooth marks like they've been chewed and chunks pull off them kind of thing. Yeah. Not weapon. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, if it's... Go ahead, sorry. If, if they're animals, then uh, maybe it's something that uh, lurks in these hallways and can't open and close doors. Maybe our best bet is to get through one of these doors and not wander in this hallway. <clears throat> and I explained there's a T intersection further down where, to the east where Folger and I went. You want to try the door past the dead creatures? Maybe. I, I'm i still thinking uh, the dead creatures are near a door. We should at least find out what's on the other side of that door, if not actually use that as our depth direction. Someone else want to open that one? I'll do it. Um, okay. To add detail Let's... also, because you said you checked the, the, the little dog people, uh, they do look like little dog people, so this is kind of hard to tell, but one of them uh, th that still has his face and snout intact <coughs> has the mouth open, and it, and it looks like... And then the tongue is out, like this. Like it's like a petrified look. Uh, like a... Like it's been asphy asphyxiated, like it choked to death. Mm -hmm. Oh, good God. Uh -huh. Okay. All um, right. It's funny. I'm really feeling the uh, the time pressure. Uh, I can't remember. Said I think it was Folger. I can't remember. But like to get some gold. Yeah, let's survive yeah. another. <laughs> like I really, I'm like, yeah, we can't. Uh, we got to find something. Or to favors be the bold. An another way to die in this game is basically end up like those other people at the other table, and you just starve yes, to exactly. death. <laughs> I say let's not be reckless, <laughs> but let us pick a direction and head basically in that direction until we have another reason to change. Okay. <laughs> Through the door. Okay, so you open the door to the west? 
across yeah. from the okay uh we'll we'll push this one open and does it open inward uh yeah um you kind of scrape this door open i assume carefully you know not to try to bring uh, add a bunch of noise but uh as you do that I'll, I'll tell you a few of the things that you see in the torchlight on the other side um you can see that um uh, just in the flickering torchlight in the darkness, you can still tell that there are mosaics uh, in this room on the walls. Uh, you, from where you are, you can't see what they depict. Um, there is... Uh, it smells moldy in here. Um, obviously, the mosaics have gathered moisture over time somehow. And uh, it, it smells really moldy. The, the fungal rot kind of opens into the air as, as you open the door. And you can, in the torchlight, actually see particles of it floating out from the, uh, the entrance. And um, the other thing you see on the other side of the door are several more of these little dog people laying on the ground. Are they also torn up? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm going to guess ah. if we see that icon... For until he tells us otherwise that they're torn up dog people. Right. Fungal rot. Yeah, just to yeah. say, like, you know, like, imagine if there is a an air, a, a place that's kind of compressed and stale, and you were to release it and open it, and you, you know, if you have light, you can see stuff floating in the air, you know, if you... Okay. Like if you old, open um, an old dusty room or something. Bulger's going to put away his sword at this point and take out an oil flask. Alright. Fungus says fire to me. He'll have that ready as he steps inside. Alright, you step inside the room? I do. Just uh, just five feet and let, me let people you up to the find front their way here. into the ranks. There you go. And then uh, who goes... You keep Flanagan with you or who goes with you? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep Flanagan sure. with me. He's got light. Sure, yeah. I'll go just behind him. I'm going to flank Flanagan. Got it. Man, our roll 20 is being weird. Oh, did I move Did I move Oda instead of Flanagan? Oh, um, here, I'll just move one of them back. Okay. We'll understand that the one up front is Flanagan and the one in the back is Oda. Um... Flanagan's and Oda's torch goes out. Uh, do you hand them a new one? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're down two torches. Um, or whoever. I've well, got like 10. So. Jay, I think. that. So the, the two torches. Yeah. And so then, okay, so they have two new ones. Um, and then a few things. Let me catch up here because a few things can happen now. I'll describe what you see. Oh, doing that wrong. To your benefit, don't worry. I know I said that, but it, it benefits you all, don't worry. Wow, right. Okay, uh, and then let's see here. Um, you see uh, that there are mosaics here. Um, this, um, they depict plants and animals, most of them mundane, foxes, ferns, things that you're familiar with. The central figure in the mosaic is a dark human-like figure, uh, once carrying something, but the glass tiles of the carried object, uh, for the glass portion of this mosaic have all broken away. And uh, it reveals behind it plaster. And there's a uh, wet plaster that has given way behind it. It turns out like the central mosaic is actually tile or glass or something like that. And the wall is soft on the other side. Um, uh, there are, in, in places where the, the, the hanging mosaics and the walls haven't rotted, you see nests 
of refuse and things that have been gathered together. And uh, out of them erupt three creatures. Mm. This is the kind of creature we're not interested in. No. But uh, we have to deal with it anyway. Um, and uh, actually, I should have done this first, but uh, Dan, if you could roll a d6, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's in the chat, right? Yes. And I typed that, right, by doing roll d6? Or in roll 20, there's also a thing on the left side that has a little die, and you can select it. Oh, okay. Whatever, whatever it. works best for you. Two, by the way. You got a two. Yikes. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, the good news and bad news. They, these nests are on the far end of the wall. Uh, one of them actually slithers up. There's this plaster. And you see these things like, like giant fat things with arms flapping off the side of them. They come up out of these nests and one like pokes its head out of the, the hole in the plaster, wiggles and then plops down onto the floor and starts wiggling around. Um, but uh, one of them is over here and then two of them are in nests that come out in the opposite end of the room. Uh, this happens all at once within seconds. Uh, so they get a surprise round. Uh oh. Um, That's not good. For oh boy. Not good for the front people. These are Depends big. How they move. How large are these things? Uh, these the, the the tokens are a bit deceptive. They're probably like three feet long. I should, I should oh, okay. be this big. Um, okay, so uh, they are hungry and desperate, and they're going to move and try to eat people. Let's see their movement. They have quite a bit. And move 13. Yeah, they have tons. So they're just going to start coming up and start trying to eat people. There's Alaric. And, are they uh, bugs? They are bugs. I, actually, actually, I'll show you. Uh, they, uh, it looks like this. Oh, God. Oh, is okay. There, people faces. Is there an option, like, in Fantasy Grounds to, uh, to show an image without... Telling you the name of it, I can do that. Like, I'll do that in the future. I like yeah, yeah. That. No, just in case because I'm actually I've always prided myself on being ignorant of everything I didn't need to DM. I like it. Yeah, I'll do that in the future. Um, all I right. Play with people who know every every monster's stat practically. Right. It's it's different. <laughs> okay. Um, does a uh, uh, does a oof does a twelve hit Alaric? Oh, it's easy to hit Alaric. Let me look at that. I think oh, they're all twelve. Is... Nice. Let's see. Oh, very good. Uh, Alaric's AC, I think, is twelve. Yep, twelve. Okay. Uh, save versus death. Oh, that's a good one. So oh, good it's one. it's a, a save, one. but you have to you add plus four to your save. I got plus four save or die. Okay. Kind of poison or something, then. Wheat heavens. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, oh that's not good. I, I, I hit it twice because I'm so used to double clicking. <laughs> What'd you get? I, I I'll look at it. Fourteen on the first one. Fourteen. Okay, so what's your saving throw number? Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Okay, you pass. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> I just saw that. Oh shoot. <laughs> this thing uh, it bites you. Um. Oh. I think that's it, actually. Yeah, that's. Uh, but that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. It you doesn't do any up. damage. Yeah, it bites into you, and you feel like numbness oh. start to travel up your arm. Um, actually, I don't know. What do you like? Tie a tourniquet on it before it gets to you, or I don't know. Uh, but you, and nonetheless, it, it sinks into your flesh, and you begin to notice a difference. But uh, it doesn't overcome you. Um, and uh, now we go to. Uh, is anyone is anyone casting any spells? No. Does anybody have any spells? No. Nope. Yeah. All right. Does an uh, oil flask so. count as a spell? Uh, initiative. That'll be a missile weapon. 
Jay. Good. Oh, for what? D D6 for initiative? Sure. Five. Five. All right. You are able to act things? first. Huh? Control click or something? How do you target? Oh, no. Nah, it's This is just a... This is what I call... Some, this is not like Fantasy Grounds. Uh, okay. Uh, so I just click it and then... You, 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 can, you can do that stuff in Roll20, but uh, this is just... This is what I call it if you work in an office environment. This is PowerPoint with friends. This no, is that's just, fine. I just this wanted, is just an so image. I, I am probably the noob when it comes to roll twenty, so I'm make oh, sure no. I'm not doing things wrong. No, no, you're the you're the tech savvy one, and so I'm just oh. like this is not tech savvy. This is just okay. Tokens. This is like a in real life. If we had a, a hey, my a, Thursday night game is Zoom, and we all roll on our uh, on our things. <laughs> all right, <laughs> movement and missile fire. Everybody can move their token and roll to attack if you're going to use a missile if you're able to. No. Um, yeah. uh, you know what? I, I, I think I, I should. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Up. Let me back up. Let me back up. Plans and stunts. That's the first thing. One of the yeah. plans I have is to scream out, where they're poison. Yeah. And I shout, get out of there. Get out of there. Close the door. I mean, you gotta, we have a 50 50 chance every time they hit you of dying. So. Well, worse than 50 50. Yeah. Uh, plus four to save, I think he said. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I interpreted that as you should add that to your D twenty, but still, that's yeah. pretty. That's pretty harrowing. Yeah. You get yeah. an at one and it's over. Okay, so it sounds like you are going to try to bravely run away. That's, that's just trying to like fall back. Plan. Okay. Yeah, I say I say we fall back. I'll drop I'll drop a puddle of oil in front of the door, and if they don't want to run away, we can try to pick them off. All right. Yeah. I got a question on how does falling back work when you've got centipedes on top of you? Yeah, so, and I, we just, we went over that. So here's in, in the book, and so that here's how I'm going to interpret that. This is a good example of like the procedure is not the important part, right? So I'm going to, so I'm hearing you say you're going to run away. So, all right, here we've ran away, but their movement speed is faster than yours. But I heard you say you're going to drop a puddle of oil, right? So that, that all happens. We don't have to do all that. So you, you move, you get down the hallway, you're fleeing, and then you throw the oil. Uh, and now you can try to ignite it, but uh, um, I will say a couple things. All you got to do is splash, like it's splash damage, um, which it doesn't mention, and I don't care. Although, actually, the weapon, what does it say for um, for a grenade weapon or for a lantern? Uh, old lamp, D4 uh, points what of damage on the yeah. One more point of damage every two rounds. So uh, you can do this in an area. In addition to that, I'll say, because it says on a successful hit. So you have to roll to hit the missile okay. weapon. Oh, that's going to be spicy for me. Uh, should be... But the area part will happen. Okay. Hopefully in front of us, not behind us. I don't have a missile weapon written down. It's going to be whatever this is, minus one. Do a long, a long sword attack, and yeah, that's going to be a myth. Okay, uh, so the area ignites in flame, but they start to slither past it. They do catch fire; they'll take one point of damage on their turn. Uh, and now you're down in this hallway. What's the plan? These things are faster than you, and they're coming after us. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, I don't know what what a plan is. I feel like. Uh, Bainter right now is just like run. Oh, you know what? Let's get in a room and close the door, but we don't want to. Uh, we got to get in a room and close the door. We're getting stuck in there. I know. We're going to get trapped because we, we already ran past our spot. We, uh, we run in and fight at the door because we got to get out. Oh, okay, yeah. Should we just open a random door then? <laughs> well, we know one door, right? <laughs> We're already past it. Yeah. Though. We're gonna... Oh, we're past Powerful. it. Okay, got it. All right. Well, then I, I, let's make a stand and wish for that. That's where I was thinking. Okay. Down there, but. Okay, you want to go in? That was our fallback position that you guys were talking before. Remember? Yeah. You said okay. fallback. Okay. So we run past the door and then we're like, get back, back in that door, and we run towards them, but try to get in that door and slam the door behind us. Oof! You uh, slam the door. Have... Better AC frontline fighter? Uh, probably me and Flanagan are the highest. But if you'll recall, I said something special about this door. You did. It <laughs> it's a little broken. 
Uh, someone will need to, and you can only do one check for this. Hold someone it. will need to attempt a force door check to slam it back into place on its hinges. Any of one of us beefy guys? How about one of the frontline beefy guys? Uh, Bainta will. I, I don't. I, Bainta's let's not, all brawn, man. Yeah, Bainta just grabs the door, uh, and he's like, uh, "Shit, he forgot!" And he just tries to like heave it up into place. He doesn't care what you guys are doing. He's just uh, he's just going for it. All right, roll a d6 for a forced door check. Okay, I have open. Is this like an open doors? Open thing? door, yeah. D6. Yeah, I have this on one door. to two. Nice. My strength of fourteen. Come on, baby. Are we gonna try to fight them at the door. Or? I fail. Oh no. Uh, the Wait, door... you have a strength of what? Fourteen. Oh yeah. Oh well. <laughs> So okay. here we go. Let's the the door. Prepare. You try to get it back into place, and unfortunately, it goes and it falls off, and then crunk, and it falls over into the hallway. Um, oh. <laughs> well, I guess they're coming in. This door is no longer useful. I'm gonna get rid of it. Set up a uh, <laughs> a, a killing circle. Set that up being, a killing that, circle. That being said, I'll say that yeah. you, in the time that you have, you can arrange your kind of order of battle. However, killing you circle. can move your your tokens. Okay. Yeah, let's make a circle around the door, I would say. This way, more of us can engage at once. Sure, yeah, then the part of what's back here. Wow, this is good news. And make sure uh, we... Ada is behind me. Can I try to keep them from coming in all at once? Yeah, this is a five foot uh, long door, but, you know, the, so yeah, they'll occupy whatever space they can um I, I know i didn't use a grid and i wouldn't worry so much but yes the answer to that is yes you can try to oh, yeah, block the door it. or you can make a tight circle and then the, the the price of doing that is that you can't have that many people like you can only have five people if you're going to block a five foot space for a creature to come in you're just right. all standing I, there I, waiting to attack yeah. it basically i think we're better off getting the most amount of attacks at once than than having somebody do the you know the great AC guard at the door because all he has to do is fail and he's down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With another type of creature, I would do the you know the the three hundred thing. Is this a, is this about right? I'm gonna move this person to the front so I can see him. Move this uh, to I'd the say back. Oda should not be in the right. Should Oda should be in the, be in the back. If unless there's a hole, in which case we need Oda. But okay. yeah, it's about like that. We can close the hole. Okay. Um, so with this, I'll say that two can get in. Okay. Okay. Um, but, bef um, we get this far and then, uh, no one has spells, right? And there are, are there any other plans or stunts going on? No. Okay. Being to climbs his sword on the ground. Um, plans to hit him uh, as they get in. Yeah. Uh, just screams at them. All right, Jay, roll a D six for initiative. Means a challenge. Very important role. Very important role. Uh -oh. Oh, no. I'm not putting pressure. Oh. It's very oh, no. This is golf, right? Oh, no. Roll low. All right. The first, uh, I've got uh, you Helmets so? and Aller Alaric are the closest to the door. So they slither. Actually, they're probably going to go straight through the door. It's dark in here. They're like, shh, shh, they go straight across. They're going to attack Jay and Folger. Okay. Oof. Um, I got a bad feeling about this. Does a 16 Very or a 12... Good. Does a 16 hit J and does a 12 hit Folger? Well, actually, Folger does not hit Folger. Okay. Uh, uh, one sec, shoot. Actually, my... I know this. I have your AC down. I've got J as a, a 16, which means it just hits. Okay, thank you. All right, These so... Are very economical centipedes. So They're hitting exactly what they need. So yeah. you can, I just figured they just probably went straight through the door, straight to whatever was there, right? But, um, yeah. uh, all right, uh, roll a uh, saving throw and add four, plus four to your d20 roll to overcome your saving throw number. Well, a 10. A 10 does a, oh God, that doesn't meet your saving throw. Nope. Oh, okay. no. Yeah, this thing latches onto your neck, and you see uh, you see Bantha start to be seized by a seizure and start to cough stuff up and shudder as this thing latches onto him, starts to devour him uh, as it uh, slowly, um, as it uh, yeah, Bantha is dead. <laughs> Hayden is very angry at about this. Yeah, only two. Goes, ah! 
I think, I, I, ben, yeah, Bentha's, yeah, I don't know where this grabs him. He's like, ah, Jesus, and he, he grabs at his leg, and um, immediately, like, you can see his, like, he's, his his face is going red, and he just uh, clutches at his neck, and he looks at all of you, and um, it's just like this look of panic in his eyes, and he just falls to the ground, like, oh. trying to breathe on the ground. Uh, all right, uh, that makes it your all's turn. This other one also can't get in. Also, they can. Two of them can occupy this space. While it's occupied with trying to feast on Bain, the Helmus is gonna smash it over the head with his mace. All right. So, is the plan to fight? Are we fighting them now? I guess that's the only thing to do, right? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Flowing on that. So, movement and missile fire first. Uh, I, I will say that because uh, Bantha went down, that um, this fella here can use the sling. Okay. So missile fire 18 hits uh, for missed. four points of damage, uh, just one point of damage. Sadly. Oda could could use his uh, sling. Yeah, that's that, so I just rolled for that. And oh, then, sorry. Oh, that's all right. And then um, oh, nice. Okay. Actually, that kills that one. These things are actually really weak. They just you just don't want them to right. bite you. That's why I was saying about you know we. I assume they were insects and therefore crunchy so let's surround it and all win the initiative <laughs> all right yeah and then uh no other missile fire the next thing is um uh, melee combat and spells yeah, hold your laser sorry okay hold will take a swing at the one that he's in and melee you, with and you can always just you know roll your dice and roll damage at the same time and then let me know if you hit a armor class ascending armor class 10. i hit did not Nice. Five damage on the one right across from me. All right, you squash it. We have a number of hits, presumably nice. more than there are targets. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will also are say... Are able to step forward and attack the one right behind it because these are insects on the ground? Yeah, I'll no? say that you can be attacking the one in the doorway. Well, no, because it, it can't reach you. Okay, so... All right. Uh, J, roll for initiative. D6. Whoops, that's the wrong die. Ignore that. Right. I got a one. Oh, nice. I was thinking... Stepping on the bodies. Six. Six, yay. Okay. All right. Um, you are able to act first. Um, no one has spells or missiles. There's one missile attack. He'll do his attack. Yep. Um, misses. And I yell, good show, Oda! He's like, yes, yes, sir. Th th yes, sir. Okay, no, no, He's no, terrified. No. Oh, yeah, I got to do my morale checks. What am I doing? Oh, no. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. Caden doesn't even wait, he just runs forward to attack it. Oh gosh, okay. He's very angry about Bantha. Um, it's clear to you, uh, Oda is, is terrified. Um, he screams um, and loses his mind and runs off. Oh god. Where? Is there to run? Oh yeah. Hey, run past oh, it? He's yeah, gonna no. run past it? No, yeah, he can't actually. Good point. I, that would be crazy if he's afraid but, of it. But, but you can see that he's completely he's, lost. he's lost his nerve. Run, and, run the other yeah. direction. Yeah. All right. Uh, if anyone moves and and goes into melee, you can you can attack. Uh, let me know if you hit. I'll yeah, I'll step forward as well. If there's this space is, next to, I will attack, ah. attack with my sword. I'll move some I missed of tokens one. out of the way. Barely missed. I, I keep doing the double click. I'm sorry. I missed with a two. Okay. Folger hit. And you did two damage. Oh. That's really good news. So <laughs> so I think that you all get past these bodies and step on this thing. And, like, it's just dark in here and it's crowded and you bump into each other. Like, you imagine, like, the torch behind you as it's, like, flickering and all this commotion. Right. It's hard to even see in here or even breathe. Like, the air is not even great. And finally, Folger, you get up in front of them and just bring your weapon. You're able to squash this thing. You hear a insectoid scream. Like a... I throw myself at the ground by... Uh... Oh, my God. The, the bee name. Bantha? Yeah, Bantha. That's it. And I'm, I'm trying to see if there's anything that can be done. And, like, you know, is there a wound that I can do something with? Caden is just ramming his mace into that dead body or whatever. Okay. Folger will, Folger will try to grab Oda by the Just shoulders him and shake him. Get him, get him to 
make some eye contact. And I give up. Um, okay. Bantha has... Uh, most certainly you find that he is dead. Uh, with a shocked and angry I was expression hoping it was some frozen kind of, uh, on his face. Recoverable thing. Uh, it is completely... He's absolutely dead. And... Um, um, you you grab a hold of uh, of Oda. Uh, he's he's just lost his mind. He's shaking, flailing his arms, and everything. You drag him back, um, if nothing else, for, at least for his own safety, for sure. Um, and eventually, he calms down enough. All right, uh, Jay, you can roll up a new character if you want, or I can th- I can bring up a backup. I think I have a backup for you, right? Uh, no, I've already rolled one. I'm I'm already going through it. Um, I think as, as caller though, I just want to like check in with what uh, Isaiah's doing too. Oh yeah. Uh, I think um, Helmus hadn't uh, quite realized the lethality of um, that bite, so he was also like inspecting uh, uh, Bentha and surprised to realize that uh, he had fallen. Um, and so now I think he probably say a little prayer over uh, Bantha and um, yeah, I don't know. He's definitely uh, questioning, like delving deeper into this catacombs. <laughs> he finally calms down and he says a prayer as well. All right. Um, okay. Um, you can, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to your new character in a second, Jay. Um, but I'll get, I'll give you a new token though. Basically, uh, I don't have, uh, let's see, I'll just give you a copy here. Well, with, with a uh, half hour to go, I don't mind not being, being part of it. Oh, no, there's no reason you shouldn't be. Yeah. You should totally no roll a new character and keep going. Like um, right now? There? Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Somebody else is okay. going to exp- to find to investigate the mouth of doom or whatever. Yeah. Or reason. he could roll. He could roll one of the torchbearers for just this last bit. Yeah, I mean, if you prefer, well, that's fine too. If you want to be like Oda or uh, either way. Um, I have one more thing to uh, choose, and I could be ready. Okay. Yeah, then yeah. Folger well. will gather the others oh, for a a word before we carry on. Okay, what's the what's the word? He'll he'll circle everyone around and say, "Some of you may feel disheartened. We've gone now on two expeditions and lost a man each time. We do no honor to their sacrifice by fleeing, returning empty-handed." Oda weeps in his hands when you say that. The best way to honor their service is to stand in the breach against the next beasts as they did will not let this place defeat us our turn may come one day but if we flee their sacrifice will have been in vain Bantha stood died on his feet facing his foe bravely here we will attempt to follow his example wait a second <laughs> Let me, you know, the bravery facing the faux part. I, yeah, I'm not the best with words. Does he have any gold? Yeah, uh, wealth by a grief. <laughs> he does. He has uh, five two gold pieces, eighteen silver, and fifty-five copper. Bring it to his next of kin. Fifty-five copper pieces, and uh, also all the weapons and equipment can be passed on as well. Um, so yep. you can... We'll bring that to his kin as well. But while his kin is waiting, <laughs> oh wait, does the if the guy who's coming in is equipped, great. If he's not, then then you know we're going to generously give it to the guy who's naked. Right. Someone yeah. should carry his shield at the very least, though both of the torch bearers are the henchmen already. So Oda we may not have to shakily place for them. steps forward, wipes the the grime from his face and all the muck, and you are covered in like insect guts and covered in dust and soot and and he's like ah, ah, i'll carry his shield you know what maybe i should be um the um uh what's his name flanagan 
Um, and this uh, this other character I'm rolling will just be will be my backup because I, I need to buy them and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. So, well, then in that case, I check. Uh, we're going to bring back this stuff. Boat is uh, Bantha wearing anything better than leather? Yeah, Bantha's wearing oh, yeah. a, a chainmail and has a shield. A we'll borrow the chainmail if we have the it, the time to put it on at any point. I don't know if we will. Okay. Yeah, Flanagan's just quietly watching. He's he's not said much. He's sticking by Fol Folger because that's what he's been doing up to this point. Ross, how much time would it be to uh, put on chainmail from a body? I don't have. I don't any... know if we want to. Do. No, it's fine. Yeah, I don't have any. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Jay, you can right. you can use this then one. Then temporarily, I, I have what yeah, is chainmail okay. plus? I'm not going to change that. it on my sheet. But... What were you going to say, Ross? No, no, no. I was just I was just saying it's fine. You can just put ar doff armor. How much it's more fine. is chainmail? It's a it's a four. It's four plus four, so it's plus two armor class. I have fourteen right now. Cool. Um, okay, so um, just like uh, not this isn't uh, Flanagan, but just as like the caller, I guess. What do you guys think we should do? Like, I guess we kill those three centipedes. Up that room, we bled for it. Right. Yeah, loot the room. Destroy the nest. Okay. Uh, let's. Yeah, that's a good point. Good thing. Yeah, nest. We don't know if there's more. So, um, all right, I'll move uh, um, Oda. Oh, wait, wait. What did you say? What are you, you going to do? We're going to check the. Um, we're going to check the room. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, carefully look inside the room and see if any more centipedes burst out of nests. It does. Yeah. It, so it does look like things could make it into the room through the holes in the nests. Like uh, that is something that. Uh, oh, there are holes in the wall, kind of. Yeah, this place is like a hive. Uh, okay. Okay. Now let us. Let one us uh, see one, the door, guy. Uh, one other right. important detail that when you go back and you look, is you see a door on the south end of the room. Mm. Maybe Can we skirt it, around the edge, do you think? Yeah. Is there a way we could, like, plug those holes? or Wouldn't go near the holes. I say if we want to skirt and go that way, one person skirts, we have everybody else at the door ready to shove it closed as soon as the person gets back in. Should he need to beat a retreat? Okay, so we're running for the door to the south in this room? Kind of yeah. the deal? But one okay. person first, because if that person, if the thing starts busting out, at least we're ready to, you know, combat them and stuff like that. Okay. okay. I have one Ross. more flask of oil, and I'll have that ready if something comes out. Hopefully they fear fire the second time around. Silly. If you have one, uh, let's not waste the, uh, I was going to say we could pre-prepare it, but nah. We may need it later. Okay. Well, we may not need, well, we don't have much later to go if since yeah. we happen to meta know this. Yeah. So why don't we prepare the flask of oil on the ground already? Dan, <laughs> so I think I did talk. All right. Dan, can you hear me? I just wanted to ask if it might be possible to uh, inspect one of the bugs and see if, I don't know, I don't know that he has any speciality in this, but like if there's an obvious, like, I don't know, venom sack or like something mm. that uh, he could attribute this kind of rapid demise of his companion to and potentially harvest. Are you, uh, you're a cleric, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you could lob off the entire front part of its head and do you have a sack with nothing uh, not without food in it? I think it? I skipped you... the sack. I have a backpack, but no, I could, I could volunteer. I have an empty 30, uh, pound capacity sack. Okay. There is a Large strange sack. person in town with strange smells that comes from his hovel. Um, so if you lob off the front part of its head carefully uh, and put it in the sack, you get these nasty parts of insects left over. And, and it's great thinking, food. Elmas. We need something for for our trouble. Okay, so... Well, the doorway is, like, pasted, though. Let me make sure I understand the plan. So you're going to go quickly through here and just get in the door. You're not going to stay in this room. Right. Okay. We don't want to stay in that room at all in okay. case, uh, you know, it takes him a bit to come Harder up. Harder than we have to. All right. Um, I'll move your all's tokens. I know it's maybe laggy. Um, there's a lot of dynamic lighting and stuff. So this is more, uh, think of it, 
less is like a I don't know what to describe it. Less is a virtual tabletop and more is yeah, just, yeah. it's more of a digital play mat, I guess right. is maybe I would call it. Okay. So um, you make it into this room. I'll it's describe giant. what you what you see in here. You see um, that this room is decorated with tapestries. Anyone uh, if 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 you look at these things you can see that there's they're rough cloth and crude sewing, uh, so they're not really worth anything. Uh, but they depict scenes outside of this dungeon itself, including the demon mouth. Um, and uh, around the demon mouth in that tapestry, you see s scenes that someone has sewn of a battle raging between a small army of human archers and a large force of some kind of inhuman looking people uh, led by three black robed figures, helmets mm. decorated with curling ram's horns. Uh, the leader's apparently human, each one carrying a mace topped with a metal skull. And at the uh, northeast corner of the room is an alcove and you can see a skeleton of someone laying on the ground, uh, wearing leather armor, uh, pierced in several places with arrows. Uh, it's clear that the leather armor has been ruined. Uh, the arrows are in surprisingly good condition, and you can see that it's wearing a backpack uh, and has pouches and extremely fashionable leather boots still in good condition. Um, what is Flanagan, Flanagan's hired by, uh, uh, Folger, right? Like my, how have you hired me, Folger? What's my responsibility to you? Uh, he decided he negotiated to come along for a full share. So okay. you're basically, uh, an independent full member. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, Flanagan will walk over, uh, greedily right away. Um, he's not trying to hide anything, but he starts, uh, opening up the pouches and things like that. Yep. All right. Um, make a save throw. <laughs> uh, versus what this time? Uh, I think it's, it's just a save, isn't it? Yeah, it's just yeah there's only one. Yeah, you're looking for a 15, 14. Oh, you have a sheet. Do I? Um, is, oh, is sorry. Uh, yeah, so it's whatever the uh, level one fighter save is. Somebody's like, <laughs> you need a 14. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Any bonuses to this roll? No. He just, has oh, no sorry. bonus. Yeah. Or penalty. Natural, natural twenty. Nice. All right. Um, you're able to. So you start reaching for this stuff, and all of a sudden, and it starts to shift, and you grab it instinctually. You get to all the stuff, the bag, and everything, and the floor gives way. Um, this whole area here. And the stone falls through, and there's a, a pit down below. The skeleton slides away from you, able to pull off the boots and get the parts of it, uh, parts of the skeleton with it. And then the rest of it falls down into this pit about uh, 20 feet below. I high fi uh, Flanagan there. Good job, Flanagan. Um, in the uh, backpack, you find the following things. Uh, you find that it has five iron spikes, a lantern, a pint of oil, and 50 feet of rope. Don't worry, I'll give you all this stuff later. Um, a belt pouch containing 200 gold pieces. Oh, yes. And the boots are worth at least 10 gold pieces if you can find the right buyer. We can and... survive another week. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah, so Langan uh, opens it up and he says, look what we got. And uh, smiles. He's got like maybe missing a, missing a few teeth, and he just like sh shows everybody with the torch, and uh, and then he uh, he like looks at it greedily and uh, sets it on the ground, and then turns and looks down into the into the pit. Are there is there anything else down in that pit? Um, in the pit. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, no. Uh, but you also have three arrows. I should know. Okay. Will you track? You're gonna. You'll let us know afterwards. Those things. Uh, yeah. In fact, I'll post it, all of this in the results. 
Okay. Cool. Um, no. And uh, just in the time that we have left, uh, this uh, having seen your friend die, even, uh, and everything that's happened, this has been a long day, 16 hours. You are exhausted. Your supplies, uh, water, uh, everything, you're drenched in sweat and grime uh, as you've crawled in these old, musty places. And you uh, get up out of the, uh, the the black stairs in the mouth of this demon. You, <gasps> you can feel, breathe the air, and you realize it's going to take you several hours to make it safely back to Zelkor's Ferry and not be at the mercy of whatever comes out here in the dark. And so you travel back to Zelkor's Ferry. Um, in the remaining time, uh, there's a few things. Uh, the first thing is... Um, so, John, I think you were saying next time, uh, if the other two people wanted to cycle back in, you were saying you'd, you'd set out, and then yes. uh, is, is anyone un- anyone else unavailable for Monday the 16th that I should know? Uh, and who can confirm for the 16th? I, I can confirm. Okay. Yeah I, yeah, I also can confirm, but then I've also done two, so... I right. assume that means I'm up for cycling out. Yeah, yeah I was gonna too. I was gonna roll a die, but it, but if you don't want me, to, I mean I'm, I'll do it however you guys want. But that's kind of like, uh, um, but uh, Dan and Isaiah, are you, are you uh, able to play next week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm able to play, but I'm also uh, fine for rolling a die on me too. You know. You know. Yeah, I'm able to play. Okay. All right, in that case, what I'll do is I will roll a... I mean, if there's not anybody that wants to take my place, then I'll just go with the roll. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I will roll a D... Well, hmm, I have an odd number of people. Um, uh, well, let's... Let's roll let's, a step let's... higher and re-roll if it's, yes. uh... Yes, uh, so I'm gonna start with a D3, and this goes one, uh, it goes, um... One J, two Martin, three John. Okay, so I got a D three okay. here. Um, I got uh, Martin. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a D four. One through two is uh, J, and I got one. So that's J. So uh, that's John uh, and Dan and Isaiah for next time. But I don't know if the other two want to play. Right. So let me ask them first. Um, All right. And. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see if, if they're able to play next week and then we'll cycle like that. Um, cool. If you all want me to schedule another day or something or work that out, just let me know. I, I do have the availability right now. I could do it uh, an extra day. If you just, do, I cannot because I have a, you know... Totally one, understand, yeah. Yeah, yeah no but, problem. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely popular. Yeah, yeah cool. if you if you find interest 